Hello, this is SuperQuest, and welcome to another live stream. Yes, we are online here at SuperQuest Studios in SuperQuest Attic, and Monday? It's Monday? Oh my goodness gracious. Oh no, Wesley's not doing his homework. Well, guess what? Wesley is a very studious studist student, and he has completed all of his homework, and he studied for his Latin quiz, so how about that? It is time to start doing something I enjoy. Um, so here we are live, and uh, yeah, why not? I mean, I got nothing better to do, so this will be episode one of the Beginner's Guide. Let me just pull this up with my wonderful cel cellular device here and check that beautiful audio out for us. <laughs> beginner's Guide, and let's check it out. That beautiful, audio out. beautiful, beautiful. All right, ready? Let's start the game. Ooh, I can hear it in my headphones. That's always nice. Begin the game. Ooh, crazy, right? Please make sure audio is on. It is. How wonderful is that? Controls. W A S D. Hold on. How wonderful is that? Hi there. Thank you very much for playing oh. the beginner's guide. Audio is just. My supreme. name is Davey I mean, Reed. Why wouldn't it be? I wrote the Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what this I is like fun. is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This or, is what I like about all of Coda's games. Are we supposed to I walk mean, through here? Not that they're all fascinating yes. as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human oh, being really is. There's nothing here. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Mm. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. Huh. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. Is he murdered? And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. I mean, it's because I find his games powerful and interesting. Very And powerful. I'd like this collection to reach him, to very maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll that show email you the date no that sense. it was completed. This first so one confused. was made in November 2008. 2008? I was, I was five years old. Ooh, we're in like a science building. Whisper machine, status active. Activate, oh, whoa, goodness. Whisper machine active. Uh oh. Self-destruction? What is this? This game is called Escape from Whisper. Oh my and goodness. it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Oh, I like this. Okay, well that goes the same direction. Oh no. 
Wait, can we go through this door? You can click to fire the gun. Hey! Oh. Security call breached. Hostile alien life inbound. Oh no. What do the aliens look like? It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. Enemies should be but coming out of the door. we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Oh, I only have a certain amount Enemy of bullets. Oh, oh yeah, I can go out here. So is there only one I way to monster? I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Oh, that's cool. And that's it. Well, that's cool. Wait. Oh, okay. I go through here. This is really crazy. Oh wow. I like this hallway. Oh, is this a maze? Please don't. Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. Oh, I, great. Uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern. So, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Oh, thank you. Wait. So, okay, we got out of the labyrinth. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you, your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? You want me to sacrifice? I, I don't even know what I'm doing here. I've just been thrown in here and you want me to sacrifice myself? What is this? Oh, okay, I'm locked in here, so I guess there's only one thing to do. YOLO! <laughs> Ow. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. Yes. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Oh. And then we go back and die again, and we can do it over and over again, right? Right? Do we jump on it again? Oh no, we go up. We go up into space. And we see the labyrinth, and then we see all the level. And then there's everything. The beam causes you to start floating. Ooh. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. Got it. Got I, it. I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But I like this. And... What's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. It does. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. All right, I'm ready to go. Take me there. November 2008. Ooh. Oh, it looks like Slender. The past was behind her. Okay, I can't move. Is it a horror game? Something going to get me? Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. Nice. And the, and the writing was behind me. That's cool. Oh, I like this. I can only walk backwards. How cool is that? All right, so I just got to... Wait, what the heck? Why is there... Why is there, like, holes on the wall? I don't get that. Well, that's, that's weird. All right. Is there any holes? No. What? Whoa! So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. Oh, it is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give seen. it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Why does the future keep changing? Oh, we get to see more stuff. Oh, that wall opened. This is crazy. I love this. I'm having so much fun. Wait. When she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. Who's she? This is amazing. 
I can do this all day. Where are we going? We're going up the stairs. But the future is always behind her. How will she find the stairs? I love how it like keeps making things pop up without me noticing. And then I like see it and it's crazy. Ooh, that is a really weirdly textured door. Okay, cool. Can we walk into the door? Oh, and it changes. Yep. Uh, to it's a short little thought. It says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Yep. Didn't need anything more than that. Which, to me, is why it works. So it's saying it that gets out the quick. future gets blocked okay, by something, and then one. we have to change another route and look for somewhere else to go, and then the... No. No. No, uh-uh. Mm -mm. Nope, not at, not at 904. No. Oh. I did not sign up for a Slender episode today. I really... Ah! <laughs> where, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Can we walk over here? No, we can't. Oh, great. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Ah, Please be patient with me for a I few love more it. games, and I promise you'll see what I love it. I love it. I love that game. It shows humans are... Our fear of Oftentimes, no. Coda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Three people watching. Whoa. I wish oh. I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. Can we and find I don't a, agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? Can we find an Easter egg here? Let's go over here. Let's find an Easter egg. I, I know it's like... tempting, but there's actually nothing over here. Sorry. <laughs> The guy actually tells me there's nothing over here. Seriously? Is that like sp d Does he just like guarantee that we're gonna go over there and like say that in the audio? Because everyone goes over there? That's amazing. I love this game. I love how the last one showed us humans' fear of the unknown and how we expect something to go wrong when it actually doesn't. All right, I've noticed we're walking a lot slower now. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Coda's not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Whoa, that's crazy. What's in here? Oh, it's like a modern home. You walk around, talk, you start in a small room until you realize you can just walk through the walls. You you run a shop inside your own body, selling your organs strategically. A to make room them that's warm and nice a and filled with little ideas for games. Stand on an X, staring at a bear for three hours. You must address a rally and rally a group. Coda of would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It's everything. It can it's be the a other very game slow I was playing. climb to get there. Look, it's a game where you collect items, except the game automatically quits when you collect them all. Did he make everything? <laughs> so what do we do now? What's up there? It's a skylight. What happens when it rains? These games just keep getting better and better. I love this. Ready, set, fish. I do not see any water. I think that's the point. Ooh. We're in like a warehouse slash prison slash like asylum slash garage slash uh uh what? Why is there this dark wood in this concrete? That doesn't make any sense. Alright, there's only two people watching, not bad. Uh got some lights. Alright, we have a ledge that we can go down that we can't go I can go as well. Well this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go it's ahead a, and see if you can solve it. It's an interactive... Okay. Ooh, I don't like that at all. What's in here? Oh, okay, well we have a larger room that we can walk around. Okay. Yeah. Can we flick the switch from inside? Ah, we can! 
Aha! There's another switch. Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. That makes we're sense. We're gonna see it a lot. Oh no! Wait, hold on, I need to look at the dots in the room. Wait. Wait, we can't get back out? Aw. There was dots in the last room that I that I saw. Alright, there's three dots like that in this room. Let's remember that. See, the ledge stops us from looking at the dots again. I get it. Alright, so there's three dots. I think there's three in the other room as well. Okay. Alright. Is there a switch on the back of that door? No. Okay. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Alright, now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Whoa. Alright, ready? Here we go, here's the button. Boom! Goodness gracious! Whoa. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. That's so, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? It's really making me think about life. Oh no, not this again. Oh my. Oh, I hate this. Don't. Don't. No. Uh -huh. I said it. So this, oh. combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Code of the Leagues' games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've ah. seen all of them. Yeah. And once oh, we have, yeah. we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Oh, I'm safe. Okay. Whew. All right, we're now exiting the Great and Lovely Descent. Ooh, it's a, it's a, I see we're, we're descending here. We're going down an elevation. Interesting. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. It's a nice looking restaurant. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Yes, it is. What is this? The sweet, wise To tool. make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Koda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. What about the handicapped room? What? The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Well, that's cool. Handicap bathroom is nice. Alright, well, into the... into the, uh... uh unisex bathroom? <laughs> Whatever this is, there's no... Oh! What is this? What is this door? It doesn't go anywhere! Is there a door on the outside that, that goes to it? Nope. There's just a door there. And we'll probably go through it later. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Now we are in a... Oh, oh goodness. Now we are in an open world parkour. Now I wonder what would happen if I just tried to walk off the edge here. Like... What's wrong with... Nah, well, whatever, I'll just go along with what they want me to do for once. <laughs> like, it's just, I'm, the way this game is, it just, I want to break the rules and go off the edge. Ooh. You know what? 
I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna walk off the edge and I'm gonna see what the narrator has to say. Aha! We just skipped all that parkour. See? He's trying to send a message that all this silliness doesn't matter. We can just realize what's going on and skip all the parkour. It's 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 in, it's genius. I love this game. It's so cool. The soundtrack is wonderful too. What's that? Oh, that's a light. I think. Ooh, this looks like the Chamber of Secrets. We're in a large marble building. What was that noise? Ooh, it's like a. Oh my goodness, this is really depressing somehow. Don't static me, please. Don't static me. No. Oh, thank you. Thank you for... Thank you for your service. Oh, great. What is this? Why are we in like a... It's like a horse corral or like a... Ew. Ew, I don't like this at all. This, this game is messing with me. Don't open. Don't open. Oh. 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 Where are we? Gosh, every time it makes a noise, I jump like 10 feet. What are we doing here? What are we doing? Okay, we can't go that way. Can't go this way. We gotta go this way. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Oh, okay. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe wow. me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. He's getting his salty revenge. Okay, that was legitimately terrifying for me. I love how it's like we're walking right into our cell. Like, that's showing how humanity will just walk into things if, if curious enough. You know, like, we've gotten to this point where we're expecting crazy things to happen that we just walk right into a prison cell that there's obviously no escape from. But we expect the wall in the back to open or us to disappear or teleport somewhere else. and. We just walk right into our hours captivity and it's all our fault but since there's nothing else to do I mean <laughs> go for it you know that's that's the way uh, we are in our video gaming selves looks like we're outside in the prison yard here uh, there looks like a there's a chalkboard or whatever it's a window and uh, there's a weird concrete block interesting it's the puzzle again. It's the puzzle With the again. the exact same solution as the last time. Really? Intriguing. Yep, there's the, there's the lever. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Okay. Uh, I'll be waiting. This is a very interesting level very thought-provoking and kind of depressing I will say uh, but uh, oh oh I like this room oh great now we get the box figures now we get these guys finally I've been waiting for them what's this fire a cabinet wardrobe what was Here, up there? Here, Kuda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat. There is a word stamped with Use whiteness. The one, two, three yes, there on was your enormous keyboard to prison. respond. Okay, you there, did you come from up above? What was there? I'm gonna turn down this volume, it's a little loud. What was up there? 
There was a word stamped with whiteness. Yes, there was an enormous prison I spent hours in. Yes, there were these floating colored blocks. I'm going to allude back to the first game. With the colored blocks. That's the world above? You've been, th you've been there? Now this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. I prefer not to tell you. After all, we've only just met. Three. What? But you, you don't understand. We are trapped here. That puzzle is our only escape. We need to get through it. Oh, this is interesting. I hear like a clinking noise in the background. I feel like they're locking me up. So. You think you want to get through? But trust me, you don't. Let me describe it for you. Let me, let me tell you all about what's over, what is over there. All right, I will tell you how to solve it. I'll say one. Oh no, but but I do. We do. We need to get there. Do you understand? It is the most important thing in the world. We have to escape the prison. There must be an ending. I promise you. There is nothing I want more. Why do you want it? Tell me. That's it. Now we can go. Okay, we didn't tell them how to solve the puzzle. That's important. They don't know how to get out. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, here's the interesting thing. I couldn't get out. You can get in, but you can't get out. Because remember when I tried to get back out of the door and I, I couldn't because the lever was just there and it just opened the door? So I don't even know if I told them how. I could even tell them how to get out. I don't even know how. Uh, oh, look. The same exact room. This is just wonderful. Yes, do you want to know how to solve it? No, I've been here this entire time. I'm still going to reject. I suggest you go and see the puzzle sometime. It is, it's not meant to be solved, but you can sit in the black space in the middle. What happens if I solve it? Why would I sit in the black space? Who are you? I'm gonna say what happens if I solve it. Not sure, but if I have any suspicion, what you find won't be worth what it takes you to get there. You'll have another. I wasn't done reading. Rude. <laughs> but what's this? It's a really nice marble hall staircase. <laughs> Interesting. Has anyone commented? Nope, no one's And catted. so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Interesting. Down to the final floor. There's a light. Ooh, this looks creepy. Oh, it's a, it's a street. Oh, this is the this is the picture of the game. This is like the title of the game. Whoa. It's a lamppost. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. Oh, okay. That's why. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination. Which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Take me to the next level, narrator. Let's go. I love this game. It makes you think that someone's actually talking to you and like pulling you through this level when it, it, actually this is the game itself. These aren't real games. This is just the narrator from the game. As you walk around, you can leave notes. All notes you see are left by other players. What? Whoa. Whoa, it's a blue thing. It's like everything. Oh. Hello? What do we do with this? Oh, nice room. Not. <laughs> Rude. What? This is a very nice room. I like that room. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first no game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just 
so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. Wait a second. In okay. retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying see, to get see his this attention. Person, it says, how do you beat this game? I was over enthusiastic. Even though he hasn't even but got to the But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. Obviously there's more to and do. And I cooled off eventually. Whoa, there's so many notes everywhere. Whoa, holy Seamus. Can you guys hear me? Who? Who are you talking to? Hello. Reasonable. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. Yeah, they I do. see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. Do you feel like a hero yet? No. Don't be afraid, do care. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with Balls. him. False. False. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is secret. really seductive to me. Time. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just I get to know you through your work. I really want to go read I that. I think this is why I always liked Coda's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. Oh, I can't jump off the edge. And then I feel less lonely too. What the Seamus is this cavern? Boring. I can assure you, guaranteed, that there is an acorn somewhere here. You know, what's really cool is that Coda's making this game boring on purpose, and he's identifying how boring it is, so it's kind of ironic by, like, becoming a... Oh, my goodness. Okay, I thought I was gonna... Okay, I can jump off there. Hey, guys, just looking for someone to talk with. Oh, that's so sad. I feel bad for this Coda character. I refuse to believe... But a but, but a but, wherever that is. I need to go to the the freaking bathroom. <laughs> recognize me, please. Oh, I recognize you, Mr. Speech Bubble, and I will help you. All right, there's so many things to say. It's so many. There's nothing to hear back. Don't listen to that guy. Oh, this one wants me to keep going. This one wants me to stop. We two should have an argument. This is very cool. Uh, a free T-shirt. Need other side. Door, why you so... Door, how open? Open sesame. Makes game, includes door, cannot open door. Thanks. Wow. That's amazing. Someday I'll meet the person who made this. So Coda d cannot meet himself. Many people, because... Okay, I, I can't read all these. Sorry. Wait, wait. Do you hear the chimes? They keep on going. Okay. What chimes? I would feel like very much to be desired. This is really cool. It's like a whole other place over there. Can we go that way? Can we jump? Okay, we can't. Wow, that's kind of scary. Right. Hmm. Wow, there's like a big painting. I'm guessing we're going to come out over there. I think this is not where I'm going anymore. This is really cool. I love this game. Of course, I say that the first time I play everything, but don't listen to the other notes. I am not, I'm not safe. Well, what's dangerous? Oh, that looks dangerous. <laughs> wow, that is a really cool painting. It looks like it was moving for a second. It moves as you move your eyes around. Help, I'm trying to speak. I think it's about how things look messy from up close and perfect from far away. So when you're over there, it looks like a beautiful artwork. See? It doesn't look good now, but it did earlier. Wow. There's really creepy whispering in my ear, and I'm kind of bothered by it. Yes, we're all here now. Who's all of us? There must be a reason for it, though. It's a terrible secret. This is really interesting. Ooh, big room. At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here... 
I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. There's the three dots again. There's the three dots. That has to mean something. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. Wow. These people don't know how to solve a basic game puzzle. Wow. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Oh, I get it. All the whispering are all the people, all the, the chatters that are talking. That's cool. They're all the people. Goodbye. I know how to solve this. You don't. Ha. Huh. Oh, this is really cool. Typewriters! Why do you even know? This is oddly creepy. Oh my goodness. Look, they're all making notes. They're all typewriters together. I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. Why are you having so much difficulty talking? Speak, 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 please! Wow, that was a really weird game. Wow, I, Coda, you are getting kind of strange. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Hang with it. All right, I'm hanging with it. I got you. I got you, narrator. We can do it together. All right, we're going into uh, a hallway. Now we're going down some stairs. I was there a well outside? That, I think it was a well. No, another painting that was the exact same painting that was upstairs. Interesting. Random wall. I like it. I like this house. It's pretty cool. Uh, just walking through identical hallways, looking for dots. Oh, and now we're in a creepy place, like always. See, like, this is it. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. We're in the you well. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. We're in the well. Oh, the furniture's gone. How about a TV with surround sound? A refrigerator, put a giant hole in the ground. Yes, I want a giant hole. Oh, what? I asked for a hole, you gave me a table? What is this? What, what about along the wall of the room? 10 stoves lined up along the wall. I really like a washing machine. Let's put a huge picture of a horse. I want a horse. Oh, sofas. Oh, so it's not giving us what we want. It's the same furniture. Skylight, full ceiling window, let's open this baby up. <laughs> I'm thinking 10 by 12, recessed electric six inch, uh, soft LED ceiling lights with fluorescent trim. We'll put live Tesla coils in each corner, yeah? Perfect. And of course he just puts the, the lamp, yeah. And a table, you need a table. There are already a table. Who are you, what exactly are you doing this from? Where I'm pretty sure none of my choices are making any difference. Tables were invented in 1935. Yes. Table. I'm going to be cocky with them. Yep. Same exact furniture. Oh, wow. Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. This is cool. Wow. So, okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Hello, please walk forward. See, it's the same concept of walking into a prison, but there's nothing else to do, so 
I mean, sounds interesting. This guide will enable you to escape any prison environment. Follow the instructions carefully. Take care that you remember each step. First, click on this table. Oh, the three dots again. There they are. Click. Good. Go over to the photo frame and click to turn it slightly. Which photo frame? This photo frame. Click. Now turn the floor lamp in this room off, then turn it back on. Where's the floor? Oh, I see. It's already off, so it's... Or no, it's not off. It's on. Turn it back on. Now go to the left side stuff and move it over a little. The left side stuff. Now go to the left side sofa. Well, which is the left side? I guess it... Finally touch the shelves. That's it! In a real prison, the escape will now open. Return to the start to be taken back to your prison. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. This is really crazy. Oh, it's gonna take us back to our old prison. What happens if we go around it? What happens if we walk away from it? Nope, I guess we just go onto it. Whee! Alright, we made it. We did everything it asked. This is amazing. Oh, and we're... And in. of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside, and the outside is the inside. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this, to see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. Whoa. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop, that particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Oh, it's Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going, and then he hits on something. What is he hit he on? It. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created, and the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. Whoa. What have we here? We're in a town? There's hedges, kind of creepy. Uh, there's a lamp post, and the hedges just just are hedges, and we're just all alone. And we can sit in this like phone booth here. And that's really creepy. We can go touch the lamp post, and we walk in, and the door shuts. Uh, uh oh. Who is this? Hey, it's me. I'm you from after you escaped the prison. What? From me? So you were trapped in the prison too? Yep, I was the furniture mate. It's a conversation. And so this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, wow. and to get some good advice from someone who knows. That's where I am right now. Is that even oh, I'm so glad to know still that I got yourself. out eventually. You know, well, all of these like games so game. far are Actually, Coda I'm talking already to himself. what being in the prison is like. It's strange, but in a way, I kind of miss being in the prison. Uh, it... It feels like being completely still and wildly emotional. Wow, this is... I hear music. Do you feel any different? Sometimes I'm scared. I'll get out and the things will be exactly the same as before. Now I'm really the same person. It actually does change. I don't feel like the same person at all. Oh, I accidentally pushed the one. That's the worst thing I can imagine. Well, you get something else in exchange. What do we get in exchange? 
Wait, if you're me, then did you get a call from another version of you and you were trapped? No, I think I'm the first person to call back. Yes, I did get a call. That's how I escaped. <gasps> so I'm supposed to tell him how to escape right now? What? This is crazy. I'm so confused. Well, what did they tell you? What did you have to do to get out? All they told me was to be sincere. They asked me how I felt about being the person. Just talk to me for a while. Yeah, Cody just wants to be talked to, so that's what I'm going to do. What? That freed you? How does that work? Listen, you can't know until you're out, but I promise it works. Just... It will make sense. This is really weird. Okay, I can talk. Let's just talk for a bit. Will you be here? I'll be here as long as you need. This is really... I love I, I love talking to people, but you know, at some point I'd like to get out of this telephone. I can here. see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, it would. I can agree with that. So what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? This game looks a lot nicer. Oh wow, there's really nice terrain actually now. To me, this environment is meant to represent Coda's puzzle, with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. There's a house. Oh gosh, that guy scared me. Oh my. Hey, you know what? I think we might end it here for today. I mean, it's a nice short little episode. That but maybe next episode we can, uh, oh, there's a door. Maybe we can uh, explore this area and find out what it has to offer. But for tonight, I think that's it. It's 9.40. I'm going to take a shower and go to bed and, uh, and uh, be uh, ready to go tomorrow. So uh, if you enjoyed this, leave a like. And uh, thank you for the two people that are watching now. Goodbye. It's been great. Uh, please say no one's chatted because I haven't been looking at the chat. Um, and chatting is always encouraged. Please do that, and I'll see you all later. Uh, oh, that's uh, that's it for today. Bye.